All right. Ugh. I'm going to delete this part. <laughs> what? <should> I... <laughs> <laughs> it's like every day I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go ahead and start. But then I'm just like, oh, you can start whenever, nigga. <laughs> 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 I'm really not going to delete it. It's just going to be like, uh, what the fuck is going on? Why is it silent? <laughs> because I don't know what to say. Okay, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. okay hello 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 everyone welcome to the holiloquy podcast where we step out and talk about sexuality this is your host vernon t scott or dr vernon t scott Douglas, uh, also known <laughs> as slater jackson or for you other hoes sebastian's adams pay me um <laughs> today i have my boy hakeem how you doing today i'm all right chilling chilling you know how it goes but <sighs> Just out here living life, being being glorious and all that shit. Peace, I peace, James. Being glorious, be glorious and gorgeous. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those who have not seen the previous episode, go back and listen to that before you listen to this one, so you can have context. I'm joking. You can just do this whenever. Um, yeah. uh, Hakeem, do you mind just introducing yourself, letting everybody know who you are once more? Sure. Uh, my name's Hakeem. I am a young African American male. Um, I am also a certified, well, a nationally certified counselor. Uh, currently working on my APC. Uh, it's in the works. The board has to just license me. Get on that board. Um, in the state of Georgia. Um, yeah, I'm also in the Aries, and mental health is my game, baby. So for those, I probably should have asked this the last uh, episode. Uh, for those who do not know what an APC is, what is that? Oh, yeah. So APC stands for Applied Professional Counselor. It's different from an LPC and an LSW. Um, so an LPC is a licensed professional counselor and a LSW or LMF, no, LSW is a licensed clinical social worker. LCSW, my bad. Mm-hmm. Um social workers please don't come from my head because i know y'all got ops like <laughs> that they got um, ops they do have ops they have ops all in congress <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> so what does uh because you know when you go into the mental health fields there's levels to this shit and the levels oh my god ridiculous. so many levels oh my god so many fucking levels yeah it's so hard to become a therapist but you know you can easily become a cop to shoot people and you know <laughs> mm. shade <laughs> was meant there uh what exactly uh, do you do <laughs> as an apc <laughs> as an expiring apc um so essentially what i do now <clears throat> is i do uh intakes for a community a community mental health organization um i can do intakes for anybody um, because I'm well versed in diagnostics uh, or diagnosing people, uh, for those of you who do not speak that. Um, so essentially, I can diagnose you with like a, a disorder from the DSMV, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. I'm good at reading that. Um, so yeah. And also, I kind of do a little quick slap a band aid on it counseling um, or like life coaching, kind of sort of, depending on the situation. Uh, once I get my APC, I do plan on kind of branching outward and expanding my skill set. Um, I want to kind of like work with people who have um, <laughs> not not like not issues, but who are struggling with their sexual identity, um, if you will. Um, people who are uh, younger because the youth really have really struggle with identifying their own sexuality um coping with the you know not being the normal quote unquote um you know male or female that gender binary and stuff so yeah sounds like noble work very noble work i'm here for it so which is very interesting that that is the path that you're looking to go into um because today's episode is all about gender so (laughs) look at that So I actually want to start the conversation off by talking about gender roles. Oh, shit. So what is your take on gender roles? Uh, And if you don't mind, uh, do you Mm -hmm. mind defining them or should I do that? Because, you know, I'm just going to do something ghetto. 
<laughs> I mean, I I much prefer the ghetto explanation because I'm just gonna come up, come in and like fuck all that shit up with like a whole eloquent scholastic. <laughs> Okay, Dang. so I'm going to do the ghetto and then you do the professional. Let's do that way. <laughs> All right. All right. So essentially what ghetto, or not ghetto, <laughs> what gender what ghetto? role is, you are a man, therefore you need to do certain things. You need to be the provider. You need to be the one that um, protects the family. You own shit. You are the man of the house. Everyone should respect you and everybody else is silent. Meanwhile, the female is expected to be the passive person in the household, be the one that takes care of the family, uh, cater towards every all the emotional needs. Meanwhile, let's let me go ahead and say the the man does not have the opportunity to be emotional. One of the flaws there. Um, <laughs> So that's that's the gist of it. Everything that the man is not, the woman is supposed to be. Um, and also the woman has no power. So that's just the Cliff Notes standard version of that. It's professional. Um, so the quote unquote professional side of it is basically uh, from a, a man's perspective or not man's perspective, but a man's role in society is based on being the provider uh, due to the way it was in hunter gatherer times that kind of thing and also uh the way that society is structured um so in certain societies men aren't seen as the majority they're just seen as like the minority um and let's see what else men are also expected to be what breadwinners mm -hmm. like you know that kind of thing uh again another carryover from hunter gatherer times men are expected to be strong they're expected to be uh not emotional uh, like you said, which is also a byproduct of our society, um, because it's most our society is mostly male driven. Um, and the woman is expected to be the nurturer, um, expected to carry the, in the entire load of the household while the man goes out to do his manly duties, that kind of thing. Again, another carryover from hunter gatherer times, because back in those days, women were very, very fragile because, again, they had medical issues that they could not solve with, you know, the technology at the time. So, yeah, mm. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> so, um, I know in today's society, there are, uh, you know, there's my favorite thing, toxic masculinity. Uh, and <laughs> how, huh? My favorite subject. Oh, OK, then. Uh, and how that portrays itself in a lot of things that we uh, have to deal with. But I want to start this conversation by discussing the aspect of not being able to be emotional. Well, for men and how that impacts mm -hmm. us uh, most definitely in terms of uh, men's mental health um, versus mm -hmm. women's mental health. And mm -hmm. what what comments do you have about that? Um, so as far as toxic masculinity is concerned, my favorite subject. Future is the prime example <laughs> of toxic masculinity. It is. Because here you have uh uh how do you say like a, a man, right? An mm -hmm. African American man who has all the tools to be the top, I guess, top dog, quote unquote, um, to provide for a, a woman multiple women in fact and to ensure that his genetic lineage is continued on right he's got virility he's got um the good looks he looks physically fit um and in our society our modern society he has the capital to do to the capital to do so like back way 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 back in the day um if you had land you in there like <laughs> no if ands or buts about it you had slaves you in there like it's just how it was if you got the capital for it women gonna flock this is how it is um if you look good women gonna flock this is how it is um but yeah that's pretty much all i can say about the toxic masculinity and then oh yeah the non-emotional part the emotional part is reserved specifically for women because emotions cloud judgment quote unquote mm, very true and that just <clears throat> forces a lot of men to just continue to bottle a lot of things down deep 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 down into themselves and mm -hmm. it sucks that that becomes a standard within our society because now here we are in situations in uh, our economy right now or even globally right now where we had one four years of trump who is the epitome uh, of toxic masculinity and rape yeah. culture and a lot of other shit <laughs> like the mm -hmm. man is just toxic narcissism like i'm not going down that 
<laughs> I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Somebody's oh, already um, tweaked it right now, and I don't want. I don't know. Y'all do y'all. <laughs> oh shit! He said tweaked. <laughs> Look, it, when you say the the man's name, they, they it strikes a nerve. They're triggered. I don't. I, I don't got the time to be dealing with that. Right now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but like you because we're uh, a lot of men are not able to express themselves emotionally even within their own relationships so because if a man decides to open up they are hit with the why you been such a bitch why you why you acting Mm -hmm. like a little girl why are you being Mm -hmm. such a baby and all this other stuff belittling that individual just for wanting to feel something that is just regular and human and um um toxic masculinity it exists both within um men it, it, women trans yeah. individual gender non-binary it just exists it's within our culture it is what mm-hmm. a lot of us have been raised to believe and i'll also say this um toxic masculinity doesn't have to be like a hyper masculine thing right um so for women you know and this is just what i've seen anecdotally right Mm -hmm. um for women toxic 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 masculinity is coming home and seeing your man like not doing anything and then like getting on to him because he's not doing anything toxic Mm -hmm. masculinity for women is seeing your man like cry during like some sort of like real tearful moment and then call and then like making fun of him or like calling him out like why are you crying like the fuck that's weird The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. is seeing your man like cry during like some sort of like real tearful moment and then call and then like making fun of him or like calling him out like why are you crying like the fuck that's weird or him really like saying i don't want to do this shit anymore like okay like going to work that at a job that he's burnt out in saying like i don't want to do he's like i don't want to do this anymore and she's like what you can't do that you can't just quit that's <laughs> toxic i agree extremely toxic and um this might hurt some people um but this is just being truthful i do have a problem with uh the fact that you know there's uh the expectation for men to you know be out there in the workforce and then when they are out in the workforce and the woman uh, within that relationship and this is just going on heteronormativity so nobody take offense Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. the woman in that situation is upset when he is when he like you said when he gets to that point where he is extremely burned out and they do lash out or they pretty much make themselves less than who they are in that relationship to justify his uh, him being out there most definitely if there's no children involved in that relationship is like you want this person to go out there burn themselves out sell their soul for this person and you're not even willing to provide an emotional barrier for them to be anything to you or even cook make sure that there's uh food on the table for that person or rub Mm -hmm. their feet when they get home treat them like you know the king of the house you're Mm -hmm. not willing to do any of that but you respect for them to give you the world why the fuck are you in that relationship why the fuck are you here other than existing Mm -hmm. like i tell i i tell people this all the time when they like king why are you like not with a girl or whatever and i'm just like because like there's no girl on like that i've met in my walk of life that i'm like 
I will wage a thousand wars for you and I will die for you. There's never been like anyone that makes me, you know, want to go that far. There have been a couple like times where I'm just like, you know what? I would do stuff that I would normally not do. Like I'm real, I'm a real sick with my money. Like I don't spend money for nothing. I have spent money in the past (laughs) for somebody. Yeah. But I would never like to get to that point is when I know like this person is my everything. Mm, That's real. Like, um, and for those who might just be like, oh, these niggas are going to talk about money. It's not about the money. Uh, it's about more than just money. It is about balance within relationships. So th- this conversation is coming from two Black men who are healed, <laughs> in a sense, who are um, not focused on what society tells us is what a man has to be. But looking outside of that, of what what role we play in our own lives and what role we can play in other individuals' lives. So um, mm-hmm. there's a point where a lot of people have to step back and think about outside of what I've been told all my life, what is it that I want in the relationships that I'm in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I feeling validated? Am I feeling valued? Am I ensuring that the person I'm spending time with values me as much as I value them? Like, ask yourself some real questions about the relationships that you're in, or are you just so fixated on what other people think about you, think about your relationship, or are you just fixated on living someone else's life? Right. And like, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, like, you know, I'm, we may sound like real woke people, like we above all that and all that kind of stuff, but we have our struggles too like i know i have my struggles i sometimes i get wrapped up in the glitz and glamour of like oh this girl's got a nice waist and like oh like i can do this with my money for her and all this other kind of stuff and like oh well she's real expensive can't touch that like i like i've gotten to that point before but it takes a it takes a real person like a real human being to go like okay you know this person is more than that this person is more than an object for sex this person is more than um how many followers they have this person is more than um you know someone i can just look at and just like and you know look Mm -hmm. at as an object basically right and i think that's why there was like a huge number of divorces that happened during uh, the pandemic is because people had to sit with themselves and sit with their spouse that they they married just to realize that the person that they're with is not who they really wanted to be with because Mm -hmm. what 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 did you get into that relationship uh for is it because they were super cute and showed you attention and you both wanted to be that star couple that um like jay-z and beyonce essentially and even jay-z cheated on fucking beyonce like (laughs) these niggas ain't loyal not at all and even with that situation like first and foremost Beyonce can do a lot better but she's happy with who she's with I guess they work with that and it's like if you want to be a Beyonce and Jay-Z are you willing to put in the actual work to make that happen are you willing to go to couples counseling are you willing to forgive infidelity or or not it's if you are that's cool if you're not that's cool as well That's just something that you have to decide for yourself. So like, there's just so much shit, so much fucking shit. Right. And it's up to you to sift through all that shit, like on the real. So um, a a question that I've always been bothered by um, is what, what do you bring to the table? So for you, if someone were to ask that question, what would you say? So if somebody asked me what I bring to the table, um, I would say a listening ear. And I mean, like, really fucking listening, because there are some people who say they listen and they don't listen with, worth a good goddamn. <laughs> um, so a listening ear, a place of safety and just somebody that will be willing to, like, really do everything within reason, because I will not kill anybody for anybody else. Like, this mm. is weird. Right. Um, but do anything for the other person to ensure that they are secure, they're safe, um, and just like, you know, really able to thrive. Like I've noticed this about myself with uh other people and partners. Like, I'm your biggest cheerleader. I'll tell you, like, you know, hey, you're doing great in this. I'm proud of you. Like, uh, words of affirmation, I give those often. Um, you know, I'll tell you, I'll call you out on your shit. I'll be like, Hey, listen, like, I don't like the way that this is happening or 
you know, you really should be doing this because it'll lead to better things. Like I'll be that voice of reason. Um, and then there's a whole like piece of like financials. Like I'm not the most financial, financially stable person. Like I'll be the first to admit I'm a little reckless with my money, but at the same time, when push comes to shove, it's going to get done. Like, <laughs> yeah. Amen so, to that. Uh, what about I you, Vern? Well, I, I want to say one thing. Sure. Uh, I'm quite sure somebody just slid in the DMs after hearing all that because he's just like, you do what? <laughs> <laughs> do you answer to Zaddy <laughs> or Daddy uh, or Bay? <laughs> I identify as your man. That's that's what I answer to. <laughs> yeah. Should I rub up on you? <laughs> yeah, Look. you matter. Look, he delivers booty rubs, ladies. He does he delivers I, I do. <laughs> I, I, I love I'm a, I love me a mm, I love me a good ass. I'm an ass connoisseur. <laughs> so for me, now it depends on how I'm asked. And if this is uh, someone who's genuinely asking me what do I bring to a table, similar to what you said, I do bring so I'm a consent for it person. So I'm never going to ask you anything that you're not uncomfortable with answering. And I will always ask for your clarification before even getting that answer. So I will mm-hmm. ask you if it's okay for me to do this, if it's okay for me to do that, because I want everyone within the relationship to be comfortable. I do bring that listening ear. I do bring uh, exploration as well. I do bring new experiences. I also bring a very high sex drive. I'm just going to put that out there because I need that within a partner. I also bring mm-hmm. some type of stability Granted, yeah, my finances are not the best right now, but there's always time to make that grow. Um, Now, for any individual who's uh, asking that in like a snarky way, my answer will always be, I actually bring the table. I brought the table, the refrigerator, (laughs) the uh, table plates and everything with that and the foundation of the house. So I'm asking Mm. you, why are you at my door asking me, what can I bring to your table when I already have it it myself? Mm, I like that. I like that. <laughs> See, if somebody ever asked me in a snarky way, I'm like, do you want it built or like do you want it in cedar wood? Do you want it like in rosewood? Like what you would you want filigree on it? <laughs> like, right. I can get like, real fancy with a table. <laughs> motherfuckers out here building their own tables. Like <laughs> I don't sit at everybody's table because guess what? I feed myself. I can I, I can do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Shit. You're you're asking me to donate at this point. I can give you right. a table. <laughs> like shit. I got you know the you know those like long ass tables they used to have like way back in the day that were like miles long and they sit like 30 people. Mm-hmm. That's my table. Like that's my <laughs> table. I'm all the way at the end in like some sort of weird like filigree chair and shit. Like I'm trying to hear what you're trying to say. Like <laughs> right. Oh, see, you can't, you cannot fuck around with those fuck arounds with people who know who they are and think you're going to be Gucci. You're not like, no, nope. if you are fooling around with people who are forever um, providing less, accepting less, and you come across somebody who expect more, you're always mm-hmm. going to be scared. You're go, you're not going to know what to do with yourself. Don't right. step up to someone real if you can't handle real. Mm-hmm. And I will say this, like dudes out there, listen. And the young dudes out there, like, you know, people who are like 18, just finding themselves and shit. Women, women have this thing where they want to build a dude, right? I don't know why they just do. It's the nurturer in them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like women constantly want to build something up and say like, that's mine. I built that up. I was, I was on the ground floor of it. That doesn't mean that you have to have a thousand dollars in your bank account or coming in on the daily. It just means you have to have enough, like either financial security, uh, uh, personal security uh, or spiritual security, whatever kind of security you have about yourself and amplify it. Let her know that you do have the potential because women's main complaint is getting with a dude and finding out that he has no sort of drive or security about himself. Mm. Hell, that's my complaint about women, too. So go boys. Fall in love with potential. It's a thing. It's a thing. <clears throat> and I do want to add, because you did mention the building someone up. Um, for those who do enjoy, I understand why you do that. Sometimes it comes from a place of hurt. Sometimes it's just because you are a nurturer. But make sure if you're going to be one of those people who's dedicating your time to building someone up, that you already built yourself up. Because when mm-hmm. you put so much time on yourself making someone else better and you, you lose yourself, 
what are you left with right and i'll say this from like a counseling perspective too like counselors we have trouble with that right um because and that's where counter transference comes into play so counter transference for those who are kind of new to the lingo um is when you take on the other person's shit essentially you become their father their mother their uh cousin their whatever and you internalize it and then they be the in turn the person becomes your father your mother your whatever and because they touch that landmine like i me personally i have a thing where if in day even in dating like counter transference can happen like you can see your mom and your your significant other you can see your dad and your significant other and you respond to them accordingly um within the same lines parallel lines um like if somebody's a little, like a yeller or something like that and you grew up in a household where there's nothing but yelling you yourself will either try to like shut down or join in on that yelling and nothing gets resolved depending on how like you know your response style so yeah i just say all that say that mm, real shit real shit Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not that this went to a, a a lot deeper level than i thought it would be and we started this talking about gender and how did we end up here <laughs> i know right <laughs> hey we talk about mental health so you know <laughs> look it's it's some real shit every time you like there's so many of us who do not take mental health seriously and by the way everybody who might not know this there <laughs> might as well go ahead and plug that for um, the future there is going to be a mental health episode um, between myself and Hakeem um, about mental health and relationships y'all get that when you get that Uh, (laughs) but like that's that is some real shit we do not um, focus on mental health uh, at all when it comes to relationships we uh, like even when it comes to what we are told when it comes to romance how you supposed to give your all like a lot of people don't understand that the our definition of romance is codependency and codependency is just mm-hmm. not healthy yep it's that cory and topanga love that shit ain't realistic <laughs> not at all it, it was cute for a tv show it was great like even when you think about romeo and juliet oh that's so cute we should <laughs> not be modeling our lives our adult as lives off of two 15 year olds mm-hmm. who committed suicide because they did they, they loved each other so much after meeting right. each other for one day hell no it ain't good it, it ain't, ain't good. good do you watch love is blind I, see, here's the thing. My mom was watching it, and then like my uh, brother's girl was watching it, and they were like, "Oh, it's so great! It's amazing!" And I'm just like, "Yo, I don't trust any of this." <laughs> Look, you gotta watch it. Like <laughs> thinking about fucking um, what's their name? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. That reminded me of Love Is Blind, which mm-hmm. I do recommend. You should go watch it. It's okay. y'all niggas are not sponsoring this fucking show. You should hand a nigga a check. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> free plug right now but um, <laughs> but it's a really good show um mm. i definitely wa- recommend watching it because uh from the mental health aspect you will get triggered that's all i'm going to say on that uh, huh? no so oh so like way back in the day there was like this show where this lady was going around this black woman like black lady was going around not licensed by the way giving people relationship counseling and i was just like you can't do that that's that's illegal (laughs) (laughs) i'm so done (laughs) i'm done and that that even there's so much toxic that's like dr phil this man doesn't even have a, a a counseling degree he doesn't even have a actual doctor. He, all his doctors are honorary. Yet we have wow. a, a show where. Oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. As far as what? I know, they're all honorary. But that the last time I checked that, that was like in twenty fourteen. So. So so you telling me Shaq can come on the show and be like, yeah, in my doctor's opinion, I think uh you should make up. He earned you know, his. Did he? I thought he got an honorary. Oh, he got an honorary. I think he got an honorary. Oh Lord. Yep, he can. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving everybody doctors these days, even within traditional um, schools, which is uh, to say a lot. There's 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 a section of people who, you know, this from your own program. There are people who just coast on through easily. And then you have the ones who are actually doing the shit because, you know, your work is looked over three times over to make sure it's proper. 
Right. I mean, here's the thing, Vern. I ain't gonna lie. I'm one of those people that coast, but here's the thing. I'm new. I'm true to it. People are new. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Don't don't tell your mama (laughs) I said that. Please don't tell her I said that. I love her so much. (laughs) (laughs) But those of y'all who don't know, Vern uh, knows my mom, and my mom always be asking about Vern. (laughs) She is not a bitch. I love her too much. You are, though. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) <laughs> but um no like i'm i am one of those people who kind of like i didn't coast through it by any means like undergrad was not a coast that shit oh, was a fucking it? struggle i was depressed <laughs> 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 but like graduate school was pretty much a breeze because i put that work in early on um but i've always been like true to the psychology game like i even when i was younger and stuff like i was always that level-headed person i was always that place of solace that people can come to and ask for advice i just decided to capitalize off of it oh then that is a fucking word and that's the reason why i have my coaching business now because i ain't giving no more free advice to nobody (laughs) no especially especially when they don't listen to it like jesus sir i'm triggered on that one oh my god (laughs) I just, I immediately thought of three people. <laughs> Shit. Well, you got three. I got at least goddamn 15. Like, oh God. <laughs> you know, I work in community mental health. So, like, come on, bro. Come on. Like, some people, because you know, you can't put your hands on other people. But sometimes I just want someone to just sign a consent waiver saying that I can slap the shit out of you. That's all I want. <laughs> Please mm-hmm. sign that. So when you fuck up and go back to this <sighs> triggered, <laughs> you know, something that's um, this is not one of those people because I understand her situation. Right. Um, but I don't think I ever told anybody this, but I handled a domestic violence, uh, an act of domestic violence situation. Um and I just got out of my car and walked into the shit. Whoa! <laughs> By accident. Hey, here, yo, let me tell you something. The first time that I met my family and like my my dad's side of the family in Alabama, it was a whole domestic violence situation. I was like, mind you, I'm a very sheltered person. Like I I was born in California. Uh, I moved to Alabama with my dad, and we were there. Like you know, it was me and him for the first like couple years. Or not a couple years, but like two years or something like that. Mm. Right. So I'm very sheltered. I like if somebody told me the sky was blue or not blue, but purple or some shit like that, I'd be like, huh, maybe the sky is purple because I'm a kid. <laughs> so when you introduce new people to me, like even to this day, if you say your name is like Jimmy John, I'd be like, oh, that's Jimmy John over there. You know that that man's name is actually named Steve. I'm like, no, that's Jimmy John. So that all that saying all that to say this, when I first met my cousins, it was a whole fucking domestic dispute. Knives were there. People were yelling. My dad ran into the house to prevent somebody from stabbing somebody else. I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm scared for my life. Child, that sounds like the space table when I was young. <laughs> Damn, not space. <laughs> look, my look to, to be where I'm at <laughs> from what I've been through it's a testament to life that's all i can say (laughs) Mm. the space table was real that's also why i'm disrespectful on the space table i'm not going to cut a nigga (laughs) well i'm going to cut a nigga you know with the space that's the only kind of cuts that happen on the table but i'm not going to have a knife but your feelings might get hurt and I, i don't i don't care you decided to you consented to whatever the fuck i'm going to say when you came to this fucking table Mm-hmm. I, I almost had a grown man crying like two years ago and that shit mm. I, I love it <laughs> oh i yes, love give it give me them tears <laughs> feed me those nigga tears <laughs> <laughs> not nigga tears <laughs> oh my god that's the toxic side of me people um do not get on the space tables if you don't want to cry because if i'm Word. if i i can lose I'm very professional when I lose, but when mm. I'm dragging the dog shit out of you on the table, <laughs> just know your feelings will be getting hurt. <laughs> Damn. Most definitely when you think you're about to win and they say no. Mm-hmm. Sat that ass. I'm sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> but I back to the topic at hand. Person. Huh? <laughs> back to the topic at hand. <laughs> right. I'm supposed to be the one that keeps this damn thing in control. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyways so anything else that you would like to talk about um no i'm good perfect so that sounds like a little bit of never have i you know i kind of want to do would you rather and if you're into it do a couple sex questions sure all right and here we go so would you rather uh never have a uh uh-uh, i could do that hold up i didn't read the full thing um would you rather never have another orgasm for the rest of your life or have a perpetual orgasm that never stops mm. bro that's the the second one sounds like hell right yeah that sounds terrible because like you know when i were when, I, when i'm orgasming this was like a a whole situation like i lock up and shit like <laughs> damn <laughs> no um, stop trying to make me go into my coach zone i'm gonna come back to that i'm gonna come back to that i see what you were um, saying <laughs> i would i would rather uh never have another orgasm in my life like i'm cool with being an energizer bunny like see that's that's a very reasonable answer because i think i would go that route too because um a never-ending orgasm i know for someone who's never had one they would think that is great Mm-hmm. but no it's not mm-mm. Mm-mm. you will get tired of it you will want it to stop um <clears throat> mm-mm, mm-mm. and i feel like you'd be easily manipulated in that point too because orgasms do do something to your brain now um yep. it's, it's whole it's, dopamine don't amen be effect, baby. Mm-hmm. so you say you lock up when you orgasm well it's not more it's not like lock up it's more along the lines of just like you know your body you know like, just comes together yeah it's kind of like uh, like the the rolling effect that kind of so thing. similar thing happens to me um mm-hmm. have you ever tried to keep your body as relaxed as much as you can during that process i have not i need to try that try That's that shit try that shit i there was uh one night i was like you know what because i'm the type of person who can um like come like multiple times and mm-hmm. like for me the first nut does not mean you got your job done that just means okay we're here <laughs> <laughs> now if you get can get that second one out you did some shit that moved you from mm. mediocre to acceptable you might get a call back <laughs> okay. you're okay. auditioning at this point but yeah. like so this is one of those nights i was on number four Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me try, because by that time, I know it's going to be a full body. So mm-hmm. let me fight that urge to clench up. And mm-hmm. when I felt it coming on, I was like, re- stay relaxed, stay relaxed, stay relaxed, stay in the moment, stay in the moment. And oh, my God, I shook a little bit. Mm-hmm. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely worth it. Okay. I see so. you out here. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna Look, try. Give it. Try. Give it a try. Now, try let's go to the first sex question we have over here. These are these are my uh, rated X. They're not triple X. The triple X is all the way in the back. Um, oh, you know what? Let's see. I want to read one of those in this call because I, I haven't gotten to that part yet. But sure. let's okay. see. This is um, just one X. What sort of a flirt are you? How would you describe your swag? Interesting. Um, I am. Ooh, that's kind of difficult. It's kind of hard, actually, because, like, when I talk, like, I'm a talk, like, okay, so if anyone out there listens to music, like, I listen to music, which is a lot, if you've ever heard Andre 3000, like, rap, like, how he just talks and it just flows, that's how I am with flirting. Like, I'll talk to you and have a whole conversation with you, but meanwhile, I'm steadily flirting with you. Like, Mm. I'm trying to get, like, I'm getting you to a point where it starts to lead into, like, either a sexual zone or a zone where you feel like real comfortable and safe, just let me know some some like deep shit. And once I got some that deep shit, are we in that sexual zone? Depending on how I'm feeling, I got you. Like, like that, that's it. <laughs> it's a wrap after that. Like, I support. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't flirt, so I I, I can't even answer that. Like, my swag what? is non-existent. <laughs> Come on, Vern. I'm a basic hoe. Like. <sighs> Every time I try to flirt, I just feel like I sound creepy. So I just feel like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. I can help other people flirt, but I can't flirt myself. What? I mm-hmm. mean, now it's my turn to coach you. So Ooh. when you're flirting, right, have you ever tried just like, you know, picking out something that you like about the person and then mm-hmm. amplifying that? Just saying like, I really like this person's eyes. Let me talk about this person's eyes. So I will say, I, I, I'm, I, I know I'm like a chemistry person. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think my flirting gets better as uh, more I know someone. 
because um you know someone that i'm talking to <clears throat> Uh, a couple of days ago well we got to the point where i know that they have a hand fetish and I, now i know i can send hand pictures and turn them on so wow that that is very interesting to me but um <clears throat> and yes i do be sending hand pictures but um uh, i literally sent this message a couple of days ago like so how does a person submit a bay application what are the benefits i'm willing to apply for the future hubby position if it's open like is that is that acceptable yes that's damn that's grade a flirting right there oh look at me (laughs) see you over here doing a plus plus work think you're doing d work (laughs) well shit well look we the way that we are now we Mm -hmm. shall see how this develops i'm i'm intrigued see if i if i was me back in undergrad boy i would not get anything done Oh my gosh, the free time back then. All right, this is a message to current college students. <clears throat> Here, here's a life hack for you. This is, I used to be in student success, so um, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> When you get to the college campus and you are out here trying to have fun, get all of your work done early. Get two weeks ahead of time. Because when mm-hmm. you are ahead of schedule, the amount of free time you have to do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That was me my freshman year when I partied every single Saturday. Sophomore year, I listened to other people who was just like, you know, you can wait till the last minute and do shit. And I did that. Right. You know, procrastination is is a hell of a drug and it's hard to get off of that shit. Mm-hmm. Then senior year, after I cut back some hours and I could have graduated early, honestly, but cut back on mm-hmm. some hours, got shit done early. Oh, Nico was out here relaxing. You can find him on the quad, laying somewhere, just chilling <laughs> <laughs> and hoeing. Mm. Uh-huh. Well, I will say this to the people out there who are uh, in undergrad and uh, are commuters and shit like that. Listen, bro, take some time, spend some time on campus, link up with a couple friends, have a beer, chill the fuck out, man. Like, shit, don't drink and drive, of course, but just chill the fuck out. Hey, man. Hey, man. So this is a proposition. Let me stop. This is another sex question. <laughs> and right. once you hear, you're going to understand why I say it's a proposition. <laughs> All right. I literally pulled this from the back of it. Oh, that's even funnier. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing at myself. I'm dumb as hell, y'all. I'm sorry. All right. So the question is, have you ever had anal sex? If not, would you want to? Uh, mm, like giving or receiving? No, it just says anal sex in general. Oh, okay. Um, I have not, and I would. So there's two parts to that answer. I have not given someone uh, anal sex, and I would like to give it. Um, I have not experienced anal sex or, you know, what is it taking yeah i've not taking. take yeah i've not been pegged before so i would be willing to try that but that part is reserved for like way down the line when i'm like married or some shit like that because the way women set up these days i'm like yeah i fucked him in his ass girl like i'm like whoa 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 <laughs> 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 Fuck them hard. Like, <laughs> right. I'm like, had it had his toes curling. I'm like, hey, 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 man, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be telling Vanessa that shit. <laughs> I'm done. Um, for myself, definitely. Um, <laughs> um both actually. But um mm-hmm. I would say I have not been pegged, but I had the opportunity to be pegged while in making, and I let that hmm. slip. I let it slip and old girl was fine as hell too. You know, I think it was a little bit of insecurity at that point. Also not, mm-hmm. um, you know, staying on campus and cause this was yeah. back in those days too. And not feeling as though I will be able to perform the way she wants me to perform. So I was like, right. I was, you know, coasting on the, yeah, I want to, but I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I should have done it. Mm. See, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, when you like the part you said about not performing the way that she wants me to perform, you're doing it for you, right? Gotta remember that you're doing right. it. For, she's she's there. You're helping her get to where she wants to go, but it's primarily for you. She's riding your boat. Facts. 
And on that note, if there is a beautiful trans daddy out there who's just trying to, you know, <clears throat> slide in these DMs, I understand that I already mentioned that I am talking to someone, but, you know, we can get this throuple shit started off right. So Whoa. feel free to let me know <laughs> how you're feeling and we can go from there. Most definitely be like your man thick, okay? So, um, huh? Oh, I said thick. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> I ain't, do I have my socials? What are my socials? I don't even know my damn socials. That's how much I uh, pay attention to it. So Night Owl Keen, like if you're just trying to slide in some DMs, you got a nice ass. Um, hit, hit my line. Bang my line, girl. Like he said, <laughs> if you want booty rubs, professional booty rubs for for the free ski, and you are in the Warner Robins making area, he might even mm-hmm. travel, depending on how firm and how soft and how beautiful that booty is looking. He's here and ready to rub. <laughs> <laughs> I got oil. <laughs> oh what kind of oil um well i got a lavender oil sir so um I, i've just been putting a lot of people on this shit so this is some mm. um i'm a fan of butterscotch but i don't know if they they do have mm. other flavors well scents as well but the butterscotch mm-hmm. one just it does something to me but the um mm. you should try the butterscotch massage oil since uh i'm mm-hmm. not gonna get paid for this one i'm just gonna put that in the camera so you can see that oh okay nice mm-hmm. yes <clears throat> but yeah definitely try some of that i like it i even um kind of mm-hmm. mix some of that into some lotion to rub that on sometimes you know okay. It'd be nice. smelling good. That's uh, So that's a, a little trick for some people. Uh, if you have a certain scent that you like, and that scent also comes in a body uh, a body oil uh, mm-hmm. or a massage oil, mix that into some unscented lotion or even uh, cocoa butter. You might need to put some kind of uh, thickening in there. You can use baby powder, whatever the case may be. And mm-hmm. there you go. Mm, it makes it a little bit thicker. Gotcha. Mm. But yeah, and then you can smell like that all day or just put the oil on your body. It doesn't matter. Just feel good, feel sexy. But um, <laughs> Oh, also, so that brings me to like a question I got for you, Vern. Oh, Lord. What do you have? Do you have a sex bag? Red light disco. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> for those who do not know, that is the safe word of the podcast, but... I, I'm actually comfortable with talking about it. Yes, I do have a sex bag. And in there, I have uh, a dildo, uh, which I don't use mm-hmm. for myself. That thing is too big. I, oh, hell no. Um, mm-hmm. I need to get a new collar because um, the current collar I have is the collar I have for my ex. And we're not mm-hmm. doing that. Um, I really need Burn to do that. Right. Um, then I have some cat ears somewhere. One of those feathers, a whip um one of the a flog um mm. a couple masks um uh, but the masks are for um Sebastian. sensory play huh oh i thought it was for sensory play like you know like you blindfold somebody your height senses get heightened i need to get some of those honestly um what else i want to get some more i need to get some cock rings i also want to get um some anal vib- um anal vibrators yes. um well hmm. prostate stimulators that's the word uh, i kind of want to get the rose um mm-hmm. you know because oh for those who do not know get toys for your partners who own vaginas like the vulva owners they do they toys help you and them mm-hmm. so get those um so that would be a great reason to get the um uh... here, here, here's a life hack for somebody <clears throat> Who, uh, somebody who enjoys oral and do not know how to find the g-spot <laughs> so here we are having this down conversation <laughs> you know i've taught so many uh women how to find their g-spot it's, it's ridiculous how many uh this was through conversation not through act but oh okay so during the sexual act and that person's aroused um, you do not actually have to go that far to find it. It is literally at the tip, uh, the top portion. It's about uh, half an inch, actually uh, half to a full inch uh, within the vaginal canal. When you find that, touch that a little bit, you know, rub that a little bit while also massaging her uh, or their clitoris. Uh, and you will get a reaction, okay? Now, if you have the rose, practice with that. Know how that works. Use that as well as stimulate the G-spot and then use your tongue 
to outline the vulva. And then mm -hmm. use, this is going to be weird, um, mm -hmm. depending on how you're holding it, or even just your lips, find a way to apply pressure on one side of the vulva. This is not meaning bite down, but apply mm -hmm. a little bit of pressure, kind of like suction. The, the clitoris itself is kind of a bowl, is, is larger than you think it is. The side, those side lips, if you massage those the right way, you're also massaging the vulva, okay? I mean, the clitoris. Mm -hmm. And there might be some toxic shit that happened after that. <laughs> so, because <laughs> we... <laughs> When you please somebody the right way and they get super hooked after that because they're going to expect you to be bringing that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you do. This is not something that you will do on someone that you're hooking up with for the one time. Shit. Don't do the toxic shit. You do not. Do, I don't know. I understand some people say that I always deliver a quality dick. No, listen, that's how you end up with problems. Sometimes you mm -hmm. have to go into situations to give them B quality dick because you know that you're at this casual hookup just to get the nut. Mm. If you if you if they are giving you a quality energy, feel free to reciprocate because they know they're trying to put it down to put it down because they got they have to. They're here to compete, okay? Mm -hmm. If this person is not trying to compete and you're mostly just pleasing them, give them B quality. You don't want that shit. You do not want that shit because they will get hooked. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to ask you. They, they're going to ask you, so when are we going to see each other again? Oh, I hate that question so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, God, I, I hate that know. question. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, huh? What? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> do not, do not engage with someone. Never mind. I'm not even going to get into that topic. We were talking about what's in my fucking bag. I think that uh, is the majority of the things that is in my bag at this moment. Uh, okay. Well, me personally, I have uh, Ooh, yeah. some handcuffs in there. Um, you know. Okay. So you remember when uh, Fifty Shades of Grey like had their whole thing and whatever? That horrible. I actually, thing, huh? yeah, I picked up the uh, handcuffs from that because I was like. I ain't got no handcuffs. I need some. And these are designed for sex play, kind of, sort of. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Um, I have a lush vibrator in there for my uh, partner. I have engaged in a little bit of a, you know, public play with that. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm going to say this. Like, I love seeing a girl like just, oh, I don't, oh. and I was like, <laughs> you, you what? I'm sorry. I can't hear you. <laughs> um, what else do I have in there? I have rope. Um, I want to get into Shibari, but I don't really have a partner for that. Mm. It, it's more the aesthetic for me. So, like, you know, when I find a partner that's aesthetically pleasing, I'm like, I gotta tie you up. That's when I'll be like, all right, it's time to really practice. Um, not to mention I gotta get time, like shit. Mm. Um, what else do I have in there? I have uh flavored lube. Uh yes. yeah. It's mostly for me, because like honestly speaking, like vaginas just are like there <laughs> like everybody has a different i like sweet taste so like if it's sweet i'm like all right cool like bet. but it's a specific type of sweet that i like if that makes mm. sense it makes sense. um yeah and also condoms like obviously towelettes ph balance towelettes like for me like dudes pro pro tip get you some towelettes that are ph balanced because your dick gonna gonna thank you and she gonna thank you like um and then also lube of course of course of course see i i i, <clears throat> I, I went down my kink bag and not just my whole bag my whole bag has a little bit less things in there um, <laughs> whole bag is where i have my lube flavor lube of course uh i, I also mm -hmm. like an, another pro tip like you said with the vagina if you are a person who like to eat ass you can always use flavored lube so you can enjoy the place that, where you are um mm -hmm. flavor that shit people for those who are um, vulva owners, owners, flavor the shit, flavor it. Um, mm -hmm. It's okay. Let somebody know. Oh, hmm, today I'm tasting like strawberries, and I mean that shit, and I'm okay. I'm going right. to enjoy it anyways. I came here right. to eat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I came for a feast, baby. Let me get up in there. Look, just give me that. Give me what you use. I could put some down more down there and continue to enjoy. Like it's okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Be careful, though. Taste the lube yourself to make sure it tastes the way that you want it to, because some just only smell the way, but don't taste that mm -hmm. way. 
So yeah. um what else? Of course, condoms. I have so many condoms up in there. I just continue to buy more and more condoms. I just need to be on somebody's registry where I just continue to just receive those. Not that I'm using them that much, <clears throat> but mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you have to have those. Um, right. I also keep lotion in there. Um, mm-hmm. That's mostly just for myself. Uh, I also like to carry scents with me because I uh, do like to smell um, great in a sexual encounter and after a sexual encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, the same way I smelled when I left the house is the same way I'm smelling when I'm coming back. Um, okay. So <clears throat> if you are a cheater, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Not a cheater. I don't cheat though, but that's for those who do. That's a good way for you to smell the same way when you come back into the house. Mm. Hacks. Hacks. Um, but I think that's what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, some deodorants in there. Um, yeah, that's all I have in my whole bag. I, mean, I should put some clothes in there. Listen, I got when it depends on like if I plan on staying at night. Normally, I don't like spend like I'm that kind of person that's like I don't want to spend the night over this person's house oh, no. because I never get a good quality sleep. Like Facts. shit. If I spend a night, I'm going rounds. Like <laughs> I'm doing rounds. <laughs> Man, now that's gonna make me ask the question. Have you had uh not 24 hour sex, but full night of sex? I have not. Um I did I, I did, however. So like consent is everything, people. Never do something without somebody's consent. Um me and this girl I was talking to at the time, I, I should say woman, this woman I was talking to at a certain time, she was like, I've never had somebody wake me up, you know, to sex before. And I was like, all right, I know what I need to do. So like that night, when first time we ever had sex, right? I was like, I've never done that myself. So I said, okay, first round was done, second round was done, and she fell asleep. Mind you, she's all colored colored over me and stuff like that. This was during the summer, and I don't really mess around with small girls. So you know, two big bodies together is a lot of heat. And yeah, and I was just like, bro, I'm hot. I can't sleep very well. Let me just go ahead and, you know, wake this girl up real quick. Rolled over, woke her up with some, some good dick, laid it down. She would fail back asleep. And I was like, that was kind of fun. I'm going to start doing that from now on with consent, of course. So, yeah. Fuss with it. I fuss with it. I think uh, I've done that once. I've done that once. Don't do that often, though. Because I, if I'm not in the mood... Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm an evil person in the morning. So, <laughs> oh. boy, let me tell you, like, I don't know what it is, but like, when you when I get, it's like a specific switch that flips. Like, if I get into demon time, like, it all vets are off. I'm going to either make you jump through hoops or something. I'm gonna make you bark like a dog. Like, something gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Oh God, mm. we had gone through so much shit (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) through this damn episode i'm here for all of it so i think it's about that time to go ahead and close out this episode y'all have learned way too much about myself and hakeem during this episode um Mm -hmm. and y'all got plenty of tips a lot of homework that y'all need to do um Seriously, y'all need to do some of those things that we said. Like, literally, do those things. Like, mm-hmm. It'll make those are assignments. Better. <laughs> and if you decide to do those things, let us know how it turned out for you. Remember, consent is important too. So make sure you have consent before you do these things. But uh, oh, and if you are going to be using toys with someone, make sure these are clean toys, and you um, switch out your toys with every new partner. Okay. That's 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 the rule, okay. Uh, even if you mm-hmm. use condoms on them, um, definitely use condoms with your toys too. Um, mm-hmm. Most definitely, mm-hmm. if you're not cleaning them properly, that's another mm-hmm. way of spreading some diseases out here, okay. Um, yep. Be smart, be healthy, and be safe. Um, with all of that being said, thank you all so much for listening to the Haliluki podcast, where we step out and talk about sexuality. Uh, We appreciate you so much for joining us and listening to our podcast. Like, subscribe, comment, share us uh, to your network, your friends, all the other good shit. Uh, Hakeem, is there any last words that you would like to share? Um, Yeah, you know, stay safe out there, people. 
you know, do your homework. Make sure you out here shining, living life as you can. Um, also, check your insurance for your mental health providers who are, you know, within your HMO or whatever kind of insurance you have. Uh, all physicians, doctors, uh, counselors, so on and so forth can operate on a sliding scale so they can work with your income. And don't be afraid to say that you have a problem. Like, we all got problems. We all, we all got problems. Like, come on. Mm. We adults. You know, I know I'm supposed to be ending the episode, but I'm going to actually piggyback on that because <clears throat> I'm actually going to do something in June um, for everyone mm-hmm. who does follow the politi- polit- uh, Politically podcast. Uh, oh, I said that completely wrong. I'm thinking political and I'm trying to say <laughs> politically. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I don't know my own show. Oh, Okay. For those who do follow the Hello We podcast, um, because last year I actually recorded this because I <clears throat> wanted to record to know exactly what was going on with me mentally. Um, but I have a recording of when I was going through a very severe mental breakdown from um, dealing with a lot of stress from my job, um, society issues, you know, insurrection shit, Trump. 2020 Mm. 2021 a lot of bullshit that was going on in my life at the time losing family members I just broke down so in June I'm actually Mm -hmm. going to post the audio recording of what uh, I was saying at that time it's about 50 or so minutes Um, Mm. for anybody who do want to listen to that it's going to be completely unedited I haven't Mm. listened to listen to it and I don't plan on listening to it until next year uh the two years Mm -hmm. after that so (laughs) two years removed from it so i can reflect on that then Mm -hmm. but um so i will be uploading that to show that not everyone it is okay to seek help it is okay to get your mental health right and not everybody is doing well so Mm -hmm. just putting that out there um but again thank you so much for being an amazing person I appreciate you, Hakeem. Y'all, thank y'all so much for listening. On that note, you are loved. I appreciate you all. And I'll see y'all next episode. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.